it can be way bleaker, uh, which is weird because the first book was pretty bleak. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it also had kind of a high fantasy, like demons crawling out of the earth to fix you a meal bullshit, you know, like all that stuff. Right. Had a little whimsy. Yeah. (laughs) A little whimsy. A little whimsy. Demons crawling out of the earth to to make you a a dinner. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. You know what else is fun? What's that? Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixel It. My name is Kevin. With me, as always, is Phil. And Hello. today on the show, we are starting Diablo The Black Road. Oh. So before we get started, um, Phil, can you tell me a little bit about the author of Diablo The Black Road? All right, so we're dealing with Mel Odom, uh, which is tough because the first thing you get when you look for Mel Odom is this really kind of cool, stylized painter. Um, sure. And I, I'm not going to lie to you. I went down a bit of a rabbit hole with that guy. Uh, I okay. learned- <laughs> <laughs> just, just completely, completely, you know, uh, nothing to do with anything. Just like, just like, oh, this is fascinating stuff. Uh, and then, but then when I, uh, when I was able to pull back on the, uh, on the, uh, the throttle of my, uh, ADHD, uh, I found the author that we're looking for, uh, Mel Odom, uh, who is big old shocker. Say it with me now, a writer for hire, uh, a writer for hire, <laughs> writer for hire. This is actually the only Diablo, uh, book that he ever wrote. Um, but he's also written for uh, Might and Magic. He's written a few Shadowrun books in the mid to late nineties. Uh, oh, Shadowrun! Oh yeah, I, I love that we keep coming back to that. We get a lot of Shadowrun authors on this show. I feel like we're gonna read a Shadowrun book at some point. I think we got to right. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah, I think it's, it's we got to. It's so good. You know what? If it, it, it yeah, I mean, because I feel like maybe maybe we should expand. Maybe a Warhammer book. Maybe I, um, we're going to get you've been you've been uh, uh, getting I've been engaging in, in Warhammer, Warhammer content. Yeah. yeah, I've been engaging yeah. in Warhammer content, so I can't, you know, I, I, I think I think that's going to be a thing. I but, think. Yeah. But um, a, a big uh, a couple of franchises. He's, he's got a, a few franchises uh, fr- uh, franchises under his belt, which some of them uh, it's kind of a uh, one of these things is not like the other thing. Uh, sure. So, so I'm just going to read a few of the uh, franchises for he's written for. Okay, Forgotten Realms. Okay, yeah. obvious. Sure, yeah. Um, NCIS, which well, okay. that's a bit different. Yeah, 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 but but interesting. The Secret World of Alex Mack. All right, we're getting a little bit further okay. off yeah. off trail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, there's the munchkin. Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm going to see you real soon, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant that in, for those of you listening at home, but that Kevin's visiting with his family soon. That wasn't me yeah. threatening her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See you in your nightmares. Uh, okay, uh, so Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Uh, so which, is, this seems like a lot of CW stuff. A lot of CW stuff. Uh, uh, seven Sabrina the Teenage Witch books. Oh, okay. I, I should, thought you were uh, about to say Seventh Heaven. No. That, oh my God! I would start a whole new podcast to do Seventh Heaven novelizations. If that's even all right. God damn it, Kevin! You know how this works. Now I have to look real quick. <laughs> Real quick, Seventh Heaven novel. Uh, no, okay, no. There's wait, 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 wait. Four years with the Camden family. Oh, it's an official guide. Okay, okay, no, no, okay. no novelizations for Seventh Heaven. More the show that made me fall in love with Jessica Biel. What? What? What were you supposed to do? What choice <laughs> did you really have? Um, this all comes to uh, uh, a head, I think, with a uh, Left Behind military series. So Left Behind as in... Like separate... Uh, uh, separate, uh, 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 like, sub-series. We're talking about the... Left Behind, Left Behind. Yeah, yeah. These are like... These so are Seventh s- Heaven novelizations could have been on the table. It absolutely guy. could have been on the table. <laughs> It could have. 
Uh, yeah, because this is this is like it's it's four. There, I didn't even know this was a thing, but obviously there's the Left Behind series. We all know what that sure. is. Uh, yeah. I guess these were sub series. It's the Left Behind, excuse me, military, which is this whole other kind of, I guess like sub series kind of thing. It's a it's a spinoff kind of uh, series. Okay. Um, it's so funny. So yeah, they, they had seven of these in total, and uh, Mel. Odom wrote four of them. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. It's it, they, he called it he called it the Apocalypse series. So there's Apocalypse Dawn, Apocalypse Crucible, Apocalypse Burning, and Apocalypse Unleashed. Um, but no, now. It, no, 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 now. No, no, no. Now they 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 resisted that temptation. It's the only the ghost one of did. Stanley Kubrick coming in. Right. <laughs> At that point, you're like, I don't, is there any, you know, the, yeah, that, but apparently they like take place concurrently with the series so and for the, okay. So for those of you, so those of you who don't know, just haven't heard of left behind. I left take for behind, granted that most people. Will yeah. Know this is. Left behind is a series of books about the rapture happening in it happens. And suddenly like all the quote unquote, good Christians rapture up to heaven. And then there's the people who are left behind and it's, and it's, you might be thinking, Oh, I remember a show on HBO called the leftovers. Was mm -hmm. this related to that? And be like, and I would say no, because the leftovers was an interesting character piece and <laughs> left behind is moral masturbation. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so bad. And and by the way, by the way, Kevin and I have ever have always made no bones about our lack of, of spiritual ability. Sure. Uh, we, we but but the fact of the matter is is if if something's quality, something's quality. Even if you even if it's not part of a culture that you yourself agree with or care for. Uh, and uh, and 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 like one out of every ten Christian rock bands. Right. Right, you know, like that's I, it, pushing it. One out of every. 20. That's close, but you know, every now and then there, <laughs> I got one I like. So yeah, it's 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 uh, it's it's like that. But I, because here's the thing, I would love a well written, like biblical apocalypse narrative. I'd really that would actually be pretty cool. Um, it would be pretty fucking metal. Yeah, absolutely, it would. This was not that. Uh, this was <laughs> this was not that. It's it, it's streaked through with all the evangelical anti-Jewish anti-Catholic uh, shit that you'd expect it to. Yeah, like, the Pope is the Antichrist. Yeah, you know, when you when like you start noticing when you start noticing who was left behind uh, by the rapture, like, oh. you start to go, oh, okay. those 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 dang Irish. Yeah, what the <laughs> hell's that all about? <laughs> that island didn't know anything had happened for months. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> carried on as usual <laughs> yeah they were like oh it's weird um yeah that's so left behind uh terrible stuff um yeah, really bad and also for the left behind movies all you really got to know is i believe kirk cameron is involved and, yes uh, yes he he helped once kirk cameron's involved i think you can understand um <sighs> It's just that a, it's going to be bad. It's a wrap on on all of it. Uh, so and this he's just going to eat his subway sandwiches alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, a that's a reference. Uh, we're just explaining all the references so today. Sad. That's a, just, a reference to Google Google Kirk Cameron subway sandwiches. Subway sandwich birthday <laughs> birthday. <It> just, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So sad. Um, yeah, but this guy has has written. He's like kind of an old old school. Uh, uh, gamer geek, like he was, he was involved in Top Secret, Shadowrun, all kinds of other stuff. So th this guy's got some serious uh, uh, chops as far as like OG geek cred. Uh, so it, it should make for an interesting read, I think, even if this is the only uh, Diablo book he ever wrote. Sure. Uh, by the way, Mel Odom, the painter, uh, yeah, fucking slaps. Fucking cool, right? <laughs> like, there's some. <laughs> So you get, uh, yeah, I like, 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 Mel Odom, what is this guy about? And I like, look, it was like, well, he's a very talented paint. Oh, it's not him, but I'm intrigued. So yeah, it it's, yeah. Do yourself uh, a favor. Google some Mel Odom, people. It's pretty cool. 
Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And all of his work looks... All the men in his work kind of look a little bit like him, if you look at a picture of his face. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But no, no judgment here. Um, no, well, no, no, that's, no. That's totally fine. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. So over to the game. Uh, what is Diablo? Diablo is a... Uh, this is not the first time we talked about it, but it's a no. it's a hack and slash, you know, uh, loot based uh, game where you just go down into dungeons and you you beat up monsters and there's skeletons and there's yar things and there's uh, I remember playing the first Diablo and something about I, I have Diablo the first Diablo and Wolfenstein. 3D mm. tied to my tied together because the first boss in both games kind of had a similar effect on me in terms of oh. startling me. So the first boss in Diablo was the butcher, okay. right? Yeah. When you first open his door, he shouts out something like fresh meat or something like that and attacks yeah. you. You know, like this big guy. And the first boss in um in Wolfenstein 3D is uh, what's his name? I want to say Hans Strasse or something like that. Oh, oh, the Eddie guy Tro with the two two chain guns. And when you open yeah. the door, he goes Guten Tag and Guten unloads. Tag. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> unloads yeah. Unloads on you. <laughs> oh, very startling uh, introduction. Very to the startling boss fight. bosses. Yeah, I remember, yeah. and I remember uh, uh, the Wolfenstein boss. When you open the door, he was right like. You open the door and he was standing at the door, yeah, uh, yeah, ready to unload on you. And what's hilarious is I played, replayed that level. I was playing through the Wolfenstein, the newer Wolfenstein games uh, last year, and in it, in it, uh, you could play like an arcade, and you could go through and you could play the Wolfenstein levels, the old Wolfenstein levels. And there was a level that was a recreation of that first one. But they changed it so that when you open the door, Hans Strasse is much further away. Ah. And so it's not like the original where when you open the door, Hans Strasse is standing right there. And you get <laughs> Basically two just face, waiting for you to kick the door down. Yeah, a face full <laughs> of, of two uh, miniguns <laughs> yeah. right off the bat. They decided to give you a fighting chance. <laughs> a fighting chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, Diablo, a uh, classic game. It's a Blizzard game. Um, and it is, we're actually going to see the fourth one. Well, yeah. the it fourth, should have. it's going to be Diablo 4. It's actually, yeah. I mean, they've released a bunch of subtitles and, well, and yeah. DLC yeah. and stuff like that. So Diablo 4 coming out, uh, this year, will it have been released? It, it should have, it should have, it come will out, have been uh, released by the time this episode comes out. Yeah. It's the day before this. Yeah. June 6th is is when it's supposed to come out yeah so the day before or uh, uh yeah the day before this this drops we'll have fresh diablo if there are no issues with the release Kevin, um i don't i i i have come on it's it's uh it's activision blizzard i think it's activision blizzard what could go wrong they've got more money than god i think i think we can count on them <laughs> to have a smooth release day <laughs> and then Smooth. I wait the appropriate amount of time for the irony to sink in. That's <laughs> man, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna feel like a total asshat if it turns out it did great. I but I, I but I. Uh, yeah, I it's I think it's at this this point it's safe to assume, um, you know that Blizzard does not necessarily have their shit together. On, oh yeah, uh, on those things. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and that you know. Bobby Kotick is just going to be sitting there counting his money while the server issues are are happening and yes. just chomping chomping on us just look at Bobby Kotick you know he's a guy who just like chomps on a cigar while, <laughs> while like just, he has yeah. like a s s s snap on his suspender on the other hand and he's, he's like ah he's, he's a like guy who looked at the monopoly like yeah huh? he looked at the monopoly guy as goals yeah so, yeah, and he said, "You know what? That looks good. Gonna do that. Gonna do that." Uh, he's he he's cosplaying as a Rockefeller every day, every <laughs> single day. He's got he's got like 
children he hides in an attic somewhere. Like he's just yeah, he's he's yeah. all kinds of. There's no way he hasn't tasted tasted human flesh. Like that's There's that's no the level way. rich he is. I'm not. We're not saying that he has. We're just saying in all likelihood uh, that he might have eaten a person. At some it point. makes it, it. I'm just saying that. It would make sense. It would make sense. With how much money he has. It would actually be more confusing if he hadn't. I'd be more befuddled if we found out that, no, he never once tasted uh, of of long pig. For legal legal purposes, we're not saying he has. No, we are not. We're saying it's just, it it feels likely. It feels like (laughs) that's on the table. The long pig. Man, it's on the table. (laughs) Man. It's on the table. The most dangerous game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that being said, let's put the body in the marsh. Let's um, put the body on the marsh. When I tell you to dump a body in the marsh, you dump them in the marsh. Chapter one. Several sailors from the West March Navy are rowing a boat down a river toward where they believe some pirates have taken the nephew of the king. The named, uh, pi- the named sailors on the boat are Derek, Matt, and Maldrin. And Maldrin is the most, uh, you know, sea scurvy dog name that I've heard. Yeah. Uh, yet, there, we're going to have some more really on-the-nose names, like people who were named and then became what their name was um, <laughs> in this book. Uh, yeah. But anyway, these, these fellows are under the orders of Captain Tolliver, and they're discussing how the pirates they're after are just not any pirates, and they need to be sneaky in order to pull this off. Uh, but Derek is looking forward to killing some folks. Um, Derek has a taste for the blood. Nice. Um, meanwhile, pirate Captain Rathan and a priest named Booyard Chalik are discussing right. the fog. We let's have pause to, we for have, a second. Let's, let's talk about that name. <laughs> Booyard <laughs> Chalik. <laughs> That is a that is a choice, my friend. Like Mel, Mister Odom, you made a choice. Uh, you made a choice. You that is a name that that is a that's a taffy name. You have to chew on that name a little, a little bit. You do. You do. I, I, Chalik. and he's our he's our cleric. Like yeah, uh, and that, that's the name. That's that's the name of my gnomish illusionist. Uh, that's sure. not, <laughs> my, my sneaky I'm hobbit guy. Yeah, 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 exactly. But the, the, the stately priest, not so much. That's yeah, stately priest of the Zacharoom Church. Yes. Um, so Chalik hired uh, Rathen um, to help unearth a city that was buried under another city. So the city they're looking for is Ransom. The city they're currently in is Torxport. Uh, Torxport is a ghost town as well. Um, Rathen is only there for the money and doesn't actually believe what Chalik is selling. Uh, Chalik is a traitor to the Zacharum church and he betrayed the information of a lot of valuable ships and merchant lanes to Rathen to help pay uh, Rathen for his services. Um, and Chalik tells Rathen he's searching for real power that's buried under Torxport. Um, and they get into a debate about the nature of power. So Rathen is like, go ahead. Sorry. I just, I would like to point out that uh, my wife and I have been watching, uh, we've been doing like the trilogy thing. Like we watched all of the Lord of the Rings movies and we've recently decided we're going to watch all nine of the mainline Star Wars films. Sure. Um, and we watched the prequels and uh, they're every bit as bad as I remember them being, if not more. Um, but sure. uh, when the unlimited power cackle scene in Re- revenge of the sith uh happened in the third one uh uh i think i may have almost died laughing like i did not <laughs> get enough air and that's all i could think about when i was when i was reading this <laughs> we're talking about so you're saying power. Ian, you're saying ian mcdermott overacted a little bit a little a little <laughs> but but you know what the irony is we agreed that he was definitely the best actor in the whole bunch he definitely sure yeah, he, i mean ian mcdermott was amazing uh, it did a lot of great understated moments in that yeah in that yeah <laughs> that series. He seemed, he, it felt like sometimes he was the only one who knew what movie he was in you know <laughs> <laughs> it was like He's yeah, the only great. one who knows it's a, he knows it's a star war yeah exactly <laughs> 
He's like, I'm going to get my Star War on. I don't know what you kids are doing. And he's like, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting to age into this role since 1983. <laughs> you fuckers aren't going to ruin this no, for me. No, you're not going to fuck up my dream. No, sir. <laughs> they had to put old man makeup on me when I first did this role. Yeah. And now I'm just me. Now I'm just me. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to roll. It's amazing. Oh, God. Um, yeah. So, <sighs> Um, but anyway, uh, uh, Captain Rathen is like, uh, real power is, is, uh, is just a good steel, good, good steel. You know, he's, he's just talking about like swords and, and stuff. And, um, and Chalik is like, I'll show you real power. Um, and, uh, he's, he puts, uh, Rathen into a force choke. Uh, he <laughs> sure does. <laughs> he force chokes Rathen. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there is no Grand Moff Tarkin to tell him to stop in this scene. Nope. Um, nope. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Navy crew gets closer to shore. Then uh, they have a lot of Navy talk as they land. I'm just going to uh, gloss right over that. And yeah. uh, it's probably they're like, the oh, they're talking about the anchor not catching. And you got to make the boat fast when we're ready. And the climb ahead of them, et cetera. There's like so many discussions in this that I just kind of like, I mean, I read them. And then when I'm rereading them for my, for my notes, I'm just like, flip, 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 flip. Yeah. Yeah. There it it is. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) when's the next beat happen? Right. We're like, okay, we get it. This is, this is a maritime adventure. We got it. It, It's just the sailor version. What do they call it in, uh, in, in sci-fi or fantasy movies or books when they just, talk science babble or whatever like to or, oh or yeah lore babble I or so. yeah it's it's just pirate babble it's, it's just pirate it's like, babble. yeah 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 pull out the oars etc you know it's pull out the oars you gotta yeah. catch the anchor but then be ready to make the ship fast <laughs> yeah make and we're gonna have to go up and we're gonna have to be uh very silent and then uh somewhere kevin klein his ears perk up and, it's got and my tread. Tread. <laughs> <laughs> upon a prey we see steel. <laughs> Silent tread. <laughs> a cautious way we feel. Oh no my sound God. at all. We hardly may speak a word. <laughs> a fly footfall could be distinctly heard. Tarantara. Tarantara. <laughs> we have that. Ha- Come on. Why? Why isn't there? A Pirates of Penzance in the Diablo universe yet? This is this. Is, Why is there not Pirates of Why do we have Penzance? to do all of your work for you, Blizzard? This is bullshit. Um, so that's my uh, one of my favorite musical numbers. Um, <laughs> it's a because, great song. And also that the moment the the version from that adaptation of Pirates of Penzance with uh, Kevin Klein. Uh, where it's like it's basically and you you don't really get them anymore where it's basically a play that they're just recording like a movie you know yeah. what i mean yeah yeah um it's, yeah it's <laughs> it's very clearly a play like on kind of on a stage yeah um <laughs> so they have uh they really really dance their asses off uh, uh, in that, go check it out. Go watch that version. It's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful. wonderful, but it's also you get you actually get the hilarity of why it's so funny. That song is so funny, is because they are shouting yeah. sh- and singing this song as they're trying to be stealthy. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. It's, it's basically not a, it's not a soft song. It's a loud song. They 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 did not you know, they didn't mean to do this, but they basically set the foundation uh of every annoying loud D&D rogue you've ever played. Uh sure. like, you know, who blows it by screaming while he's hiding from the shadows. Like like they didn't mean to do that, but that's exactly what this is. It's beautiful. It's Kevin Klein and Pirates of Penzance. Come on. So. Come on. Um, so anyway, cat like tread. Uh, they <laughs> they consider their uh, Derek considers the mission ahead an adventurous lark, but there's concern about pirate captain's magic we, and uh, wielding the undead, um, which I'm going to circle back around to. 
uh, based on something Captain Rathen says later. And I because I'm like, what the are these two in two different universes? What's going on here? Uh, yeah. Um, and then they slip into the water and they go towards the first century point. And we're on to chapter two. Um, Rathen is struggling with Chalik's spell. Uh, but Chalik lets him go, and Rathen is angry to say the least. But Chalik lets him know what the balance of power truly is. Sort of, because Chalik used all of his energy on that one spell, and Rathen probably could have killed him right then if he wanted to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't know that. Um, and we get some backstory about how Chalik would have been sent to hospice soon if he had stayed with the Zacharum Church. Uh, to live out his days healing older priests before he would be the older priest in need of healing. Uh, and then he would, you know, die. And all of this is part of his motivation. He doesn't want to just go silently into that good night. Um, he wants to betray everything he worked for us in, in, in his entire life in the face of death. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the city below Torxborn is called Ransom. Chalik's daydreaming is interrupted by one of his acolytes. And I refuse to believe that his parents gave him this name because the acolyte's name is Nullet. Null- <laughs> Nullet. Uh, if, Nullet. Yeah. 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 Do you know what I first, the first thing I thought of when they introduced Nullet, uh, just based on that name alone, I thought, oh, this is a droid. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why it's where my head went, but I was like, if this was, if, if this was star Wars, if this was a star war, uh, no, it would be, a, would be like an astro droid like, or something. It, like the, it, it would be like, uh, the, the, yeah, it would be like, uh, zero dash ET or right. null it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what he'd be. And so far in the book, I feel, I feel pretty validated by this, this thought. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, so Nullet tells him that Brother Althrin has found the final gate. Uh, meanwhile, the Navy men are climbing. Uh, <laughs> still singing. And we get still singing while they're climbing. Um, <laughs> ta-ra-ta-ra, ta-ra-ta-ra. <laughs> we get some background on Matt and Derek, uh, who grew up together. Uh, Derek ran away to escape his abusive father, and Matt joined him in the Navy. Um but, uh-oh, they've been spotted. Fight, fight, fight. We're in chapter three now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chalik and Nullet are going down, down, down into the tunnels. It takes them so long to go down, get get down there. Um, we get a lot of stuff about demon shit and that there's so many rats in the city because of the undead zombies and whatnot. Uh, Nullet is a real, real underfoot character. He is an underfoot character with an underfoot name. Yes. Um, <laughs> And they get to the door and Chalik mentions the name Cabraxis, the Banisher of Light, which yep. that's about as good as a demon name as you're going to get. That is a great demon name. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 10 out of 10. No notes. 10 out of 10 demon name. Perfect. <laughs> back, no notes. Uh, back to the other other group. More pirate fights. Yeah. Um, Derek fights one of them off, but the other pirate, is Lon, we get a name for him. Lon is heading for the signal fire. Meanwhile, um, we get some uh, Captain Rathen sexually assaulting a woman. Yeah. Okay. I was like, that's a real turn. Okay. That's, yeah. Uh, we made Captain Rathen a little bit sympathetic in the beginning. We're gonna we're gonna dash that real quick. Yeah. We He's go a back and captain. forth with him quite a bit. Like like. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I said, uh, just to make sure we don't have any sympathy for him after he got choked out by Chalik, uh, <laughs> Rathan and the pirates killed the woman's father. And Rathan likes to fight in her, though. She's very rebellious. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to fucking murder you one day. And he's, yep. he goes, he goes, thank you. That's the <laughs> that's if it's like the nicest thing anyone's ever said to him. <laughs> um, so he leans in for a kiss after she, you know, uh, turns him on again by by talking about how she's going to murder the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. And uh, he leans in for a kiss and be like, oh, okay. And then she tries to murder the shit out of him by no. biting his fucking throat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like uh, 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 Danny DeVito in Batman Returns, except the, the, the neck instead of the nose. Like, just yeah. this, she just chomps his ass. It is 
It's pretty metal, actually. It's pretty great. <laughs> Just chomps his ass. Yeah. Um, we move on to chapter four. Derek is still chasing after Lon. Um, and my notes are, look at our bar- boy Derek go. And like bats <laughs> are there too. It's wild. You got to read it. Not really. Chase scenes are not my favorite things in books. <laughs> I love when you have the notes specifically. You're like, I'm just going to read this uh, so, you, <laughs> so you can all follow what's going on here. What was in yeah. my head at the time? I think I, I love it's it. weird. I've just like I've we've read so many books with with like chase scenes in them yeah. and I hate them. I don't I, I don't like chase scenes in books. I barely <laughs> like them in movies. Like they right. got to be, they got to be really well done in a movie for me to get any juice out of it. Yeah, um, they got to be basically a, flawless. Otherwise, in a just, book, it's just like he's running, the other guy's running. They're both right. running, 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 running for pages. It doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, he's like, oh no, he's scared by the bats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that would, that would have been a jump scare in a movie, but uh, because this is book, moving on. So yeah. this, is the, this is a book and there's more after the more text. I I know that we're not anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, finally, Derek tackles the pirates uh, after pages of running. Is it me? Am I the asshole? Or is this just page stuffing when we get shit like this? It, that was my the rest of my note. No, <laughs> no, it, it. It starts, I think, with what we were talking about earlier with the pirate babble. Um, but yeah, this this is not as bad as some of the other stuff we've read. But like, it no, does I think this feel, was just the straw that broke the camel's back for me. <laughs> I, but 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 it does have like it does yeah like like a like the bra of a first date. It is stuffed uh, and and <laughs> padded, if you will, um, padded. But yeah, I, I I actually I totally agree. I I think it gets better, and I, I'm I'm of two minds about this book. Uh, we'll get into that later. But uh, yes, I I happen to agree. I think it I think it does feel a little padded. Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, chase scenes. You're you're on notice officially from. Me. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Raythan is still getting bit. Um, he uh, he he's thinking about how vampires aren't real, and I'm I like, Mother- love that comment. <laughs> and I'm like, motherfucker, what world are you in? Right, this is the right. Diablo universe. We I just love had a, that. we just had the navy navy guys talking about how some pirate captains use the undead. Meanwhile, vampires are one toke over the line. <laughs> I I just love that. I love that. Like that's where that's where I'm sorry. I've got limits, you know. <laughs> Just and it keeps going. By the way, this keeps happening. But yeah, I'm not gonna go ahead though. <laughs> um, yeah. So Raythan thinks maybe the woman works for Chalik, may, or maybe he so, she sold her soul for power, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then he kills the woman uh, after getting free of her by stabbing her in the stomach and turning the blade up into her heart. Um, and she, she's like, ah, fuck you. Uh, she dies. Um, and, and he's really he, bummed about it. He's uh, really bummed about it. He said, <laughs> he, he goes, he says the ultimate creepy thing and said, had I known you had this much fight in you, we could have had more fun. Um, like buddy. <laughs> he's, he's got a very specific type. Let's say, uh, he's got a very, he likes being, uh, he, he, I don't think he likes being dominated, but he likes be- someone attempting to dominate. Yeah, him. someone making the effort. He doesn't actually yeah. want to be dominated. He doesn't want to be yeah. dominated. He just wants to uh, have a fist fight while he's while sexing. He wants yes. he, he wants being punched in the. He wants to be choked and punched while also choking and punching. It's yes. like yeah. <laughs> it's not a one way thing for him. He, right. w- he wants both. Yeah, Ra- Raithen kills her and then pet it. Uh, one of Raythan's sailors checks on him and they discuss uh, Raythan's feelings on Chalik and how the pirates are feeling about the priests in general. And Pettit's like, eh, I was kill- thinking about just killing one of the priests to keep them on, the, on, the, on their toes. Yeah. And Raythan's like, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> smart. He's a good that's businessman, smart. you know, when you he's think about it. He's a good businessman. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And uh, and uh, meanwhile, Derek and Lon are still going at it. They're still fighting. We've we've this has spanned like five chapters at this point. Um, this one chase scene. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Derek is is uh, is winning the fight, and he's about to kill Lon because he's having flashbacks about his dad beating him, and he mistakes Lon for his father. And uh, Matt though stops him. Uh, because they need him alive to interrogate. And Lon reveals that they're keeping the king's nephew on the captain's ship, the Barracuda. Yeah. Ooh. This has been a very musical episode. I like that. Um. Ooh, Barracuda. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's chapter four. Um. But yeah, every time it's like every time Derek gets into a fight, it's like the author makes sure to note that Matt's looking at him disapprovingly. Like yes. Matt <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, in that case. In that case, um chapter 5, Pettit is giving Wraith and the, the lowdown on what's happening uh down way down in the uh the tunnels. Mm-hmm. Um he there's a draw, he gives him a drawing of a door that the miners found down below and uh, they make a plan to check out what Chalik is looking for. Um, Raythan also realizes that the king's nephew might know what's up because he's a royal and therefore he gets learned in a bunch of this, basically, this bullshit. <laughs> yeah, which is a bit of a stretch, but at the same time, uh, what, sure. are, what are other options does he got? Yeah, if I guess that's one way to make connecting tissue. Yeah, um, sure. Pettit also warns the captain, if he's going to go speak to him, that the boy is wily and nearly beat uh, one of his pirates with a two by four, um, <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah, um, absolutely. This kid rules. Ch- Chalik is down at the door uh, and Chalik is doing his best Skeletor, yelling at Althorin for not letting him know sooner oh, yeah. about finding the gate, even though Althorin knew, let him know literally as soon as he possibly could. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chalik is just like, yeah, you know, he really he's... is. It's just, it's just shaking his fist above his head. Every opportunity he gets basically. <laughs> uh, with, that's his, that's his voice. Um, um, one of the slaves uh, hurts his leg while Chalik is down there and Chalik uses this opportunity, opportunity to sacrifice him with some sort of vampiric spell that like, no, well, it can't up. be that. It can't be that though, because there's no vampires. Yeah, vampires aren't real. Yeah, uh, exactly. Rathen said so. Right. Um, so it it like lifts the slave up into the air, and then it like breaks every like bone in his body like individually, but the slave is like conscious for all of it. Yeah. And then it, after all that's done, he this it like he goes like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it just kind of yeah, floats. just yeah, just just pops like a wet balloon. It just it's pretty brutal. It's a pretty brutal death. It's yeah. like okay, well, there's Diablo. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, really. That's the thing. Yes, up until this point, I've been going okay. I love pirates. What the fuck does this have to do with Diablo? I don't um, I don't remember any pirate uh, uh, yeah. uh, levels of Diablo. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't remember this. This is not. This is not. Or, or this is not Diablo. This is not. This is, this is not my beautiful Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my beautiful wife. How um, did I get here? <laughs> as the days go by, uh, water flowing under, and Chalik gets some health back. <laughs> this really is the fucking musical episode. This is insane. <laughs> We're not doing this on purpose. This is it's just happening. This just is, happening. This is this is organic. Uh, Chalik <laughs> then starts getting to work on the Cabraxa store with some magical shit, um, magic bullshit, et cetera, et cetera. The caves begin to crash down around him as he speaks the magic words, and it's killing the slaves, the priests, the mercenaries, uh, but somehow it isn't hitting him, and the door opens. Uh, chapter six, we're back to Derek. And Maldrin tells Derek that they should try to free the women too if they can, and Derek agrees. Um, and then there's a joke about, haha, Maldrin is eating too many pastries. Um, yeah. Okay. Just really shoehorned in here. I just we throw get a, that in. It's like, he's like, haha, by the way, Maldrin's, 
Modron's getting fat, and He's here's why. Fat. And here's we're going to spend two pages talking about how. <laughs> He's like paying. What is it? He he he. And there's he, a baker aboard yeah. the ship that Captain Tolliver, you know, they pulled some string to to get the best naval baker that he could, and <laughs> and Maldrin is trading time uh, on learning how to do stuff on the ship with him because what he really wants to be is a sailor, right? Um, and uh, instead of a baker, and in in exchange. He's giving Maldron extra, uh, extra, you know, puff pastries, probably a macaron. Yeah, um, yeah, the occasional, cookie. you know, the occasional yeah. cookie, a, a biscuit, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> yes, it would be a biscuit. Yeah, you're right. It would be right. a biscuit in the Diablo verse. Let's be yeah. honest. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we spent a little time talking about this. Uh, the joke is, haha, Maldron is getting a little fat. Um, getting a little fat. Getting a little thick around the around the middle there. Around the middle there. Um, first of all, Mel Odom, how dare you? Um, now, who, who the fuck do you think you are, Mel Odom? How dare trying to, you? Also, what baker wants to be like, no, I want a life that is has an infinitely shorter lifespan? This is this has got to be <laughs> if I haven't read ahead yet. Uh, uh, but if this isn't the beginning of a weird like parent trap style situation where a pirate they meet a pirate who'd much rather be a baker and they like do the old switcheroo i'm for ah. one i'm gonna be very disappointed and that is a fact yes um and also i want a cookie now um oh my god right <laughs> so anyway they're gonna go to the barracuda to get the king's nephew uh Rathen is going to the ship as well and Rathen and another pirate named bull who in my head is just bull from night court yep um <laughs> yep um that's, they go that's, below. that's a yeah that's a that's, that's a it. reference for the older ones <laughs> well night court had a has a had oh you're right it did a have a relaunch little... yeah with right. re, with john larroquette coming back to to that's do his and you know where, what else John Larroquette is doing? He's reprising his role as the narrator in a new Texas Chainsaw movie uh, well, that's coming out soon. Well, that <laughs> is just wonderful. There, there, that is is a prime fodder for a crossover, I think. So, yes, I agree. Yes. Night Court, Texas Chainsaw Meets. Massacre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, so they go down below deck to talk to the boy and the, and the kid bless his heart tries to do the same trick again on, yeah. on bull. And he hides above the door frame with a two by four, but bull catches him this time and throws him to the floor. Um, the boy, uh, his name is Lex, but it's written hex. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just That's a pointless just, fantasy. Just unnecessary. In there. Exactly. But just throw in a fantasy, <laughs> A letter, a consonant for for the for the the the, the for fun for fun, yeah, for the kids in the back. Uh, the Lex identifies back. Lex identifies the symbols on the door as that of uh, Cabraxis and the Black Road. Um, and then meanwhile, uh, Derek, 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 Derek is doing his cat like tread stuff all over the deck, and oh, yeah. their plan is to light the ships on fire with whale oil. Because they got they're they're lousy with whale oil. Yeah, um, we, we we're working with what we got. Chapter seven. Rathen is still talking to Lex, and Lex is trying to explain the difference between something being true and something based on truth. So Lex is giving him like a a lowdown on like uh, uh on like symbols and and like okay, so back then people used religion to explain natural phenomena. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, just because it's, it's written down and told as a story that's true. Doesn't mean it's actually true. It's just possibly a story passed down on gen for generations based yeah. on the natural phenomena. And it was used to, and Raven's like, I'm not following. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it does. Wasn't aware. We're getting a, a, a lecture on intro to semiotics, kid. Uh, sounds great. <laughs> cool. And uh, Cabraxis was a demon that was summoned a lot in the day because of his ability to open bridges to hell. Uh, Lex is like, listen, uh, this is probably all a scam. Like, you know, yep. a, a priest would say, hey, you need a, 
you need us to to do something and they would you would hire the priest to do a summoning um because so your crops wouldn't die it was just so that people could get paid um um and then there is a lot of religiosity background on Cabraxis and his followers and the concept of the three selves Mm -hmm. and how he has the offer offers the ability to uh make friends and influence people yes Um, yes it's here's the thing (laughs) i was very surprised reading that mel odom um uh wrote for the left behind series after reading this section because it's pretty astute on <laughs> culty bullshit sure. and yeah. organized religion and it's like oh yeah it's mm-hmm. like it's like all right i'm gonna have this this 15 year old boy just say a scathing indictment of organized religion <laughs> in pretty explaining much. what yeah. is. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> It, it and 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 Cabraxis is a pretty cool demon, actually. Like they they describe him yeah. in vaguely uh, uh, sympathetic terms. Like he wasn't like as bloodthirsty as the other demons. So people he's not looking to. Him. He's just there to. He's just there to help you make friends and influence yeah. people. Exactly. Um, that's all. That's all. That's all. Um. Uh, who who wrote that book? Um. Carnegie, right? Da- yeah. Uh, and Dale, uh, Dale Carnegie, Carnegie, whatever is he? He's not even a real Carnegie, is he? Is that? Is I that I the, think that is a coincidence. I don't think he was actually related to the 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 right uh, he, Uncle Scrooge Carnegies. Yeah, yeah, Carnegie. Like okay, because the name was even spelled differently, and then he changed it to be more like ah, very tricky. Yeah. Oh. If you look at his Wikipedia, it's it was spelled Carnegie, uh, C-A-R-N-A-G-E-Y until around 1922 when he started spelling it C-A-R-N-E-G-I-E, which is uh, uh, close, which is basically the same way the Carnegies spelled it. Smart. Uh, uh, he, he he changed his the spelling of his last name in honor of the steel magnate Andrew Carnegie. For and easier for others to remember. Yeah, in honor. Uh-huh. Okay, bud. In honor. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where Where do we? Okay. Uh, and then my last note on this section is: Yar, the ship is under attack. Um, <laughs> up Up on deck, Derek is just killing pirates, and Matt is being very judgy about it. Um, and Matt also doesn't like the idea of trapping the pirates below with fire, but Derek is like, fuck it and lights the ships up. Yeah. Uh, he, he does not give a shit. If you're a pirate, you deserve to die. And he is so anti pirate. Like you yes. deserve to be drawn and quartered and all the humi- humiliations put upon you. And Matt's like, they're people too. No, he's like, <laughs> fuck pirates and everyone who looks like pirates. That's all there is to it. Fuck pirates and everybody who looks like my dad. I mean pirates. <laughs> God, fuck you. Fuck you, Kevin. Ah. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. Uh, that, did that hard cider go right into your nose? Right through my sights. <laughs> Actually, that might what kind of might stuff clear them up a little bit. Helpful. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I can't believe that's never happened on this show before. God damn it. Oh. Uh, that was good. I'm really kind of wired now. That's weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I found a new way to get toasty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, down below deck, Lex escapes during the confusion and Wraith and tells Bull to get him back and Wraith and goes above deck and is like, who's attacking? What's going on? <laughs> um, we get to chapter eight. Uh, Derek Errol Flynn's onto the ship. Uh, swinging via rope and diving his feet into Bull's chest. And uh, Matt finds Lex and uh, gets him to come with them while Derek is still fighting off some of the pirates. And Derek is now facing off against Raithen, who until now, like, we've been told that Raithen is big, but we get a reminder that Raithen is fucking huge. He is right. a, he is like a, he is a slab of a man. Um, big and strong, um, ripped to shreds. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Bull interrupts the fight. Uh, Raithen is like about to land a killing blow and, and Derek's like, oh, wow, he's really good at fighting. Um, he's <laughs> like really swinging for my eyes, my heart, or my peen. Yeah. Um, 
Those and are all my favorite race, places. All my favorite parts. Um, and uh, uh, Raithen is about to like land a killing blow on Derek, but Bull interrupts by like charging at Derek, and Raithen has to like stop be- or else he'll you know kill Bull. So he like right. backs up. He's like, Bull, you idiot. And then, uh, but <laughs> Derek front flips over Bull. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We get real Errol Flynn here. <laughs> we get real Errol Flynn. Um, he front flips over Bull and off the ship uh, and over towards Matt. Um, and they're they're running away and they head towards Tarek's port. And Lex is like, did you guys do this? Because everything's it seems to be collapsing. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, um, no, no. Down Don't below, <laughs> we got locusts. Uh, yeah. locusts are spewing out of the black the black gate uh the door and they're eating everybody except for Chalik and Altherin uh get nommed on um Cabraxis then uh invites Chalik through the door and he goes through and there's just a lot of great puny mortal talk just a lot of just filled and re- some really good descriptions I'd say Mel does a good job describing hell in yes. this case um it's terrifying. Like he, yeah. he's like, he's walking and he's like, Oh, there's trees. And he'd be like, Oh no, the fruit on the trees are people's heads. It's um. <laughs> awesome. No, it's great. It, it actually made me think if, if you guys like that kind of really grim, strange, surreal detail, like a, like a, Oh, what's that? Uh, what was that painter? The, the, who did the horrifying medieval, drawings of hell oh um uh, was it hieronymus bosch yeah bosch yes if you like that kind of thing you got to read uh nathan ballingrud uh he wrote a book called wounds and it's a series of short stories that are all just about hell and devils and demons and shit and that's immediately where my head went but yeah there's a tree with just heads hanging from it as fruit and this is the shit I live for, Kevin. I love. I, I was like, I was, I was starting to be like, okay, I don't know what this book, who this book's for. And they're like, and now there are hell, hell trees with with severed heads hanging from them. I'm like, I really should make sure. I gotta give them a fair go, right? Like, just, just, yeah. What was the name of that book again? Uh, Wounds, uh, uh, Wounds by Nathan Ballingrude. Uh, I actually got to meet him uh, in Asheville briefly. And oh, that's awesome! Uh, he's a super cool guy. So uh, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that one. Bosch was painting this shit like dude. S- what six hundred years ago? Jesus yeah. Christ! There's nobody better. This stuff is insane. <laughs> Hieronymus Bosch is fucking awesome. <laughs> Hieronymus it. Bosch is like today. I will invent metal. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But he would say it in um uh what what was he? What what nationality was he? Uh is he where's my tab? I want to say German, but I feel like I'm just being lazy. Dutch. I was gonna Dutch. guess Dutch. Okay, Dutch. <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a Dutch boy. Garden of Earthly Delights. Yes. Just some real fucked up shit in there. Yeah, man. It's like it's every time you look at it, you find a new thing to be upset about. Uh, yeah, it just goes deep. Great. Yeah, so deep. Um, yeah, his style was like unnerving. Yeah, that dude's still inspiring writers to this day. Like that's just like that's that's. I should have. I should pick up like just a book of his shit so I can just There's, look through it. And it's <laughs> like they got he I'm looking at his painting of uh Christ uh Christ before Pilate. And it's it's wild, but there's like, you know, you got a, a Roman soldier with a septum piercing. Um, oh yeah. And like these guys with their with pierced lips and things like that. It's it's weird. It's so weird. I love it. He it's just got all everyone. Everyone looks like uh, everybody looks like a puppet in Labyrinth. Yeah, it, it, it just like you expect to see David Bowie in the background somewhere. It's just so strange and unnerving. Yeah, everything is is so. God, this has been your um, 
This has been your Hieronymus, Hieronymus Bosch hour. Um, yeah. <laughs> thanks for listening. No, uh, yeah, it's very Bosch-like stuff that is that gets described uh, as Chalik walks across a bridge and and uh, Cabraxis is like, oh, do you want to turn back? And it's like it's like the battle of the star screams at this point. And yeah. It's like Ske- Skeletor <laughs> versus Star Scream in my head. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, and I'm like ah, and I'm like no, I can't turn back. And, and then and and the bridge collapses, um, and uh, he can't turn back, so he keeps going. Um, and Cabraxis is like, I will be your strength. I will be your strength when you have none. Um, and Chalik's like, okay, I'm down <laughs> with that. Yeah. Sounds good. And I've Chalik always agrees. wanted more strength. <laughs> I've always wanted more strength. That was the whole goal. Yeah. Uh, and Chalik agrees to face the Black Road. Uh, that's that's the title of the book. <gasps> <laughs> and that's the end of the section for tonight. <laughs> so, uh, Phil, how you feeling so far? I know we're, we were up and down, but... We're just now getting into what I think about when I'm thinking about Diablo. Uh, so better late than never. Uh, but I don't know. I, maybe I'm being optimistic. I got a good feeling because, because the, the glimpses of the infernal that we've gotten just in this, the, the last section of this chapter, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Pretty so, cool. I have fingers more crossed. Bosch, uh, more Bosch left, less, uh, cat like tread. All apologies. Yeah. It- and you'd never think that either Kevin or I would say that. Uh, you'd never think that no. either of us would say that. We're all down for a good pirate story. Yes. Um, is there any pirate books that we would read on this show? Like real? I'm just trying to think of a if there would be anything. Uh, I don't think so. They never made any Monkey Island books, did they? No, I don't think so. That would be perfect. That would be um, awesome. So yeah, I agree. It's yeah. been it's been hit or miss so far. Some characters are are really cool. Yeah. Um, some characters feel a little bit lame. Matt just seems like the wet blanket to Derek. Um, yes. Thus far. Yes. There's they're supposed to be best best friends. I skipped descriptions of some characters who aren't even in the book. They just talk about them. Yeah. Um, they just reference them. <laughs> there's like a lot of description about this one guy on a. Uh, back on the ship who is great at being up in the up in the ropes and the crow's nest and all that mm-hmm. stuff and be like he's not here i don't know why we're talking about him uh, maybe we'll get to him later maybe um, maybe. maybe but uh, he's like oh and he's only 14 and he's really good at climbing and um <laughs> he's like yeah that tracks you know you get a 14 year old who doesn't uh understand or fear death there's gonna yeah. be good at climbing shit um that's that's when you know people really get into skateboarding. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you're just describing jackass, uh, honestly, you're just, or you you're just kill describing yourself. jackass and yeah. yeah, jackass and most, uh, most, uh, sports that involve biking or, yeah. or skateboarding or, uh, et cetera. Um, Facing death, uh, <laughs> going good, re- very fast with not much padding. <laughs> good news, Kevin. Uh, there is a novelization of assassin's creed black flag. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure fun. that's the I'm not sure that's the book we're looking for. But no, no, <laughs> that might be the only Assassin's Creed I enjoyed, though. Uh, okay, and and, uh, and 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 even then, I was screaming at it half the time because sure. Assassin's Creed uh, and I are enemies. Assassin's so, Creed is going to Assassin's Creed, um, yeah, pretty much. And also, like a good chunk of it is. Of, of the Assassin's Creed universe is like the bullshit that um, like they're doing a little bit of in this book with the, you know, so Cobraxis fits with Diablo, but mm-hmm. then they do that weird shit for Assassin's Creed where it's like, ah, the Apple of Eden and the Templars. Uh, and like, yeah, yeah. like I wish we could just like ease off the throttle a little bit on yeah. that on the Dan Brown bullshit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I Let, think mine, let's, my, let's back off on Dan Brown. Yeah. No, I, I always hated the modern, uh, the modern day shit. I was like, we also can the just modern day this, shit. We can just yeah. have this be an anthology. It always brings everything to a screeching 
you know, vagina drying halt. And, and it just, it's so annoying. And I just, it, yeah, it's, it's a frustrating <laughs> franchise that I have thoughts on. Um, oh, God. Anyway, that's the closest thing I think we've got though. So yeah, yeah I'm up and down on this book so far, uh, so far to, 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 to wrap up my thoughts on it as it is. Uh, names are fun and interesting and they're <laughs> yeah. all almost a little too on the nose. Like Mel went to a list of like, what's a good name for a pirate? And it's yeah. like Raythan, you know? Yeah. These are, um, these are characters from his D and D campaign. Let's face it. These are, so D, these are D and D campaign campaign characters. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue it next week. And I guess, uh, and uh, until then I got to ask you, Phil, mm. What are you playing? Oh, uh, well, I have continued with Far Cry 6. We've actually been discussing this ever so briefly on the uh, Discord channel. Uh, a few of our uh, uh, the people on Discord with us have been playing it, and we're all kind of kind of exchanging notes um, because Far Cry 6 was probably, of all the Far Cries to come out in recent history, the one that kind of came and went without much sound and or fury. So it sure. was just so we were talking about it a lot, and 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 I think the consensus is mostly the same, basically the same as what we talked about last week, where it's 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 fun to play, it's not the same, but I'm still playing it, and right, uh, yeah, it's it feels good to play. The gunplay is good. Um, hell, the storyline's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's keeping me it's, engaged. Yeah, yeah, it's keeping me engaged. Um, I am going to have to come back to it though. Because I also recently started playing Bolt Gun, uh, which uh, that has been my obsession for about a week. Sure. Uh, that's been, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Bolt Gun is the most recent Warhammer 40k game to be released. And it's basically a Doom clone. It's uh, it's basically Doom, but 40k. Like, it's, it's yep. that level of retro gaming style, uh, uh, the same kind of levels. Uh, that Hell, the music's similar. And I'm kind of shocked that it took the world this long to realize that a Doom clone is, might be the ideal place to put the 40K universe because it's so kitschy and over the top and gore filled yeah. and it's kind of great. Uh, I'm, yeah, I, I agree. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to, I mean, just to get into, I mean, I am also playing that. That is yeah. my, what are you playing for the week is, is a uh, bolt gun. I got yeah. convinced by <laughs> Phil talking about it in, in anticipation of it coming out. I was like, All right, I'll check it out. Um, <laughs> it is really fun. It plays super fast. Yeah. Um, I don't know enough about, I know some things about Warhammer um, 40k the 40k uh universe uh i don't know enough to like be totally like oh yes i recognize all of these things you know right, right. um i've just been googling like the monsters as they come up just be like all right so what are what are these like um and the cool thing about it is uh there's a there's a t there's a button that you just hit t for taunt and that. you get a line read from rahul kohli um, who was in the booth for four hours uh, <laughs> shouting taunts into a microphone. I love it. Um, and it's amazing. It. They just keep, it, I, you, you just keep going with them. Um, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I was watching him, uh, I was watching him watch Alana Pierce uh, play it. He was like just sitting over, over her shoulder as she was playing it. He was like, oh no, you gotta just keep hitting T and you'll get another random voice line from me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that that's uh uh bolt gun is great. I have some small quibbles with it, like me too. Me too. Uh no map question mark. I yes, thank you. Uh, and I know <laughs> and I didn't play enough Doom. I guess Doom didn't have maps, I suppose. It did, I thought. It did. Okay. I just I feel like I spent so much time trying to regather myself and try because it is that old retro style pixelated graphical fidelity which is awesome but it also means it's super easy to look completely past uh, an entrance or a door or something right. like that and a map 
would be very helpful. Uh, but I guess that's part of the challenge. You're, you know, it's, you're supposed to. Yeah, I'm. It and... Yeah, I'm on my. I'm on the last level. I'm about to play the last level of the game. Um, I beat the second to last level just before we started recording here. I literally have a save in the middle of the last battle. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. That, so a map would be would be cool i also wish there were more bosses um yeah, yeah. No, don't get me wrong there are plenty of boss battles but you're mm -hmm. going to get uh the same rotation of boss fights yeah you got so like it's four... either going to be it's either going to be a lord of change yeah. or a great unclean one or um or this a sorcerer is going to yeah. end each of the chapters. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's a lot of Lords of Change, a lot of great unclean ones. The great unclean ones are the most annoying boss in the game because they're the only boss that continually generates new ads. If they, they just I keep... never see another fucking Nurgling as long as I live, it will be too soon. The, the Nurglings are the worst and they so can annoying. swarm you so easily oh they die they die in one hit but oh absolutely but there are a ton of them and even one you'll have your back to it and he'll just be slamming at you and just draining your life and you don't even notice because it's just the one little guy uh this tiny guy could be like below your eyesight yeah. Um, and the great unclean one is the only one, only boss enemy who generates new at like you can clear all the the ads out of a room uh, for a Lord of Change and fight it yes. one on one, which and is you should, how, by the and way. you should because <laughs> the Lord of Change has an attack where it will do damage to you as long as you're in in its eye line. That's right. Um, it took me a while to figure that out. Like, why am I do getting like why am yeah, I getting same. damage? I, I, I was screaming. I was like, why? Uh, and what? then as soon as as soon as you break its eye line, it, the damage stops. And yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, so you just gotta duck behind a <laughs> pillar, shoot him, and duck in. And it's not so bad. Uh, it's not yeah. so bad. And the sorcerer is just like a beefy boy version of the um, the chaos terminator. It's Pretty like. Much. It's pretty much the Chaos Terminator with a few extra steps, but also it can, the sorcerer can use the life force of another enemy to stop taking damage. Yeah, so you have to execute that enemy before you can take out the sorcerer. So that's, sorcerer. And, uh, and the sorcerer's name is, um, it's like it Thaddeus? Sam, Samael or something like that, or something along those lines. Something along those lines. But what I didn't realize until just recently, I was watching um, Co Carnage play it a little bit, and he said, "Oh, this game takes is actually in the continuity of the Space Marine games. It's oh really? It, it takes place between Space Marines one and two. Oh, that's cool. All right, I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Because the your character references Captain Titus." several times who right. i think is a reference from the space marine games yeah 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 oh, so that's i noticed that but i didn't even oh that's great that's too <laughs> cool <laughs> i love that all right that makes me like it even more because that's that's another game i'm really looking forward to this year so yeah yeah so uh there's one more one more munchkin wave more. three times a charm right third, third times a charm third times a charm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's, I'm literally like, I, I think I've, I had to take a break because it's, it's, I will just tell you ahead of time, Kevin, the last fight is just an extended arena boss rush battle thing. So yeah, you, just, you gotta, it's a marathon. So you um, just pace yourself. Uh, I will, yeah, I will say for anybody looking to pick it up and play it, um, there's a gun that you get that you should only ever use on bosses. The, uh, um, the grav the grav cannon hell is, yes when you get it just get as much ammo for it as you can and only it's the bfg of of this game just you know save your grav cannon and so like sometimes if you have a room full of enemies you know just shooting the grav cannon and spinning around willy-nilly can be fun oh sure um, yeah no. <laughs> and causing everybody to explode but <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, it basically melts anybody, including bosses. It's like every every second is a tick of damage that does yep. like a huge chunk of health. It's um, brutal. It is really good. <laughs> really good. Um, any non-boss enemy dies to it basically instantly. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Like Terminators, all that shit. They're all Terminators. So what are the Terminators in Warhammer compared to the Space Marines? Because they look massive. Terminator armor essentially turns uh, a regular Space Marine into a living tank. Uh, they're slow moving, but they are like uh, basically indestructible. Uh, it's 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 just fucking insanity. And the fact uh, is, I, now I haven't played 40k in a long time, but one of the big uh, uh, touchstones of Terminators was that they could also teleport. So yeah, they're not moving very fast, but then all of a sudden they're behind you and oops, I'm dead. Uh, sure. And th they are brutal. Uh, they do just, that in bolt gun. They do teleport. Yes. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, they're, so they're, they're basically just take a space Marine, which is already the equivalent of about a hundred normal people and uh, crank it up to 11. Uh, and they are just, Brutal. And then, yeah, the Terminator is like another is like, OK, now we have 100 space marines combined right. into one yeah. thing. And that's yeah. that's the Terminator. And then you've got the Dreadnought, which is 100 Terminator. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a whole <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole thing. Yeah, they're they're brutal. They're they're really cool. Um, that'll about do it for tonight's episode. Phil, why don't you tell the fine folks where they can uh, support us? If they oh. so choose to do so. Oh, so, you're so. talking about uh, patreon.com slash the pixel lit podcast. Uh, That's correct. Where, yes. You can join one of three tiers to get early access to episodes, uh, free essays and all kinds of stuff that we're actually still in the planning phases for some really neat stuff coming your way. Some uh, little bonus episodes and bonus series that we have got in our heads uh, and we just need to sit down and make them happen. But there are some extra essays we've got in there, some early access stuff. It's I think it's worth your while. So check it out. Uh, Patreon.com slash the pixel lit podcast. Awesome. Yeah, go check it out. And um, if you want to uh, just uh, get in touch with us otherwise, go follow us on uh, Instagram and Twitter at uh, Pixel It Pod. You can uh, go to our Discord, uh, which you can find through our website, pixelitpod.com, um, where you can find the link to the Discord. You can join the mailing list, um, all that fun stuff. So it's really great. We love hearing from the fans, um, and we've been hearing from more of you lately. And, oh my gosh, uh, you guys just keep been showing up. It's awesome. Keep showing up, and I, I, I really. Uh, shout out to the fan who uh, today noticed that I spelled vengeance wrong in one yes. of the episode descriptions. And I got to tell you, folks, uh, I enjoy, I actually enjoyed that. Did, you know, go ahead, point point out the thing that I, I got wrong. Uh, Just shows also, you're I'm, actually paying attention to our shit. Shows you're actually paying attention. Also, not going to fix it. Um, no, no. <laughs> it's going to stay there for po posterity. In fact, any time we mention vengeance in the future, it's going to be called vengeance. So Vengeance. Just be ready. Just be Vengeance ready. is is gonna be a thing, folks. Mm -hmm. Mark it down. Mark it down. Uh, on this day, yep. uh, June seventh, uh, two thousand twenty-three. Vengeance. Right. Vengeance. Uh, Metal Gear Rising. Veg Revengeance. Revengeance. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, oh. I, I I think that's right. it. Good night. Uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs>